Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna take a look at this model of the heart. We're gonna learn all the structures on the heart and get a better idea of their three-dimensional location in the body. We're also gonna to go to another model that's gonna show kind of the full circulation of the heart. It's gonna have all the branching arteries and other veins and stuff that come off of the heart. And so we can see that in the whole body. But for now, we're gonna start with this model. And the first thing that you'll notice is that on the outside of the heart, there's all these smaller branching blood vessels here. And of course, those are the coronary arteries. They're the arteries that supply all of this muscle, which you see in red here. It'll supply all of that muscle with blood. And so we have here, we have the right coronary artery, which kind of wraps around the heart to the side there. And we have the left coronary artery right here, which is then gonna branch into the left anterior descending coronary artery, which makes sense, right? This is the anterior surface of the heart and it's going sort of downward, so it's descending. We also have the left circumflex artery. Circumflex just means it's kind of going around the heart. And so we see that one that'll go around the heart to the side and provide a lot of this kind of uh, inferior part of the heart um, with blood so that that part of the heart can pump and function. And of course, if we follow the right coronary artery down, it wraps all the way around to the bottom of the heart here. And so all of this heart muscle is getting blood from that right coronary artery. Now we have some other blood vessels branching up here. One I wanna point out first, this is the aorta. And those coronary arteries branch off of the aorta. So if I pull this off a little bit, you'll notice there's a little circle right there. And that's gonna be where that coronary artery, the right coronary artery, branches off of the heart. And so if I put it back together, you can see where that connects right there to its opening into the aorta. And then the, the left coronary artery, um, which is right there, that's gonna connect right there, which kind of goes under the pulmonary artery here and connects to the aorta. So the aorta is gonna to connect to both the right and the left coronary arteries. We've got a couple other blood vessels we can see here. Like I said, this is the pulmonary artery. We have the aorta. And then here we have the superior vena cava, which is gonna, these two branches are gonna to converge to the superior vena cava. If I look at the bottom or inferior part of the heart, so if I turn this around a little bit, here we have the inferior vena cava. Remember that superior and inferior vena cava, those are gonna both connect to the right atrium, right in there, we'll see that in a second. Some other branches over here that I wanna point out. One is that this right here, that's gonna be the pulmonary artery, um, which pumps blood to the lungs. And this is gonna to connect to the left lung. But if we look over here, we see that, that also branches off to the other side to connect to the right lung and send the blood to the right lung. And so we see all of this, this right here would be the aortic arch and it's not shown in here, but the aorta is gonna branch down like this and go down here. So the descending aorta would be behind the heart back in there. And so those would be the main blood vessels that we can see. Of course, I mentioned the coronary arteries. We also have coronary veins, which are gonna take blood that's been sent to the heart muscle through the coronary arteries. The coronary veins are gonna take that blood um, back to the heart so that, that blood can get back into um, the heart there. So I'm going to open up the heart now and we'll take a look at what it looks like inside. And so a few things that we'll see here, here's the opening to the superior vena cava. Here's the opening to the inferior vena cava. And so that would make this the right atrium. Of course, we have low oxygen blood, which is why we painted this blood vessel in blue, even though it's not really blue like that. Another interesting thing you'll see back here labeled number five right there, that's going to be this section of the heart that actually during fetal development, so when, when the, the fetus is developing, there's actually a hole in the heart that connects over to the other side back there. Um, and it's something unique about fetal development, but as the uh, baby grows, um, that's gonna cover up. But sometimes that might not um, seal off completely. And so if you've ever heard of somebody having a hole in their heart, that's when this doesn't um, close up completely um, during fetal development. Now, this is the right atrium. Um, that would make this right here the right ventricle and that would make this the tricuspid valve. And of course, um, that's gonna make sure that blood only flows one direction through the heart during circulation. These are the chordae tendinae. And remember the chordae tendinae are gonna be part of the valve that's gonna connect down to the base of the ventricle. So this is the chordae tendinae of the tricuspid valve. Here we have the right ventricle. And of course, when the right ventricle pumps, it's gonna push blood up through here into the pulmonary semilunar valve. If you notice, the valves look very different. This is the semilunar shape. It's got these kind of three little sections to it. Um, and the blood can flow one way through. And then of course, the, the tricuspid and bicuspid valves are gonna look more like this, 
whether we've got the chordae tendinate connecting to the base of the ventricles. So here we have the pulmonary valve, pulmonary semilunar valve, and the pulmonary artery. And on this other side, we're gonna have the left atrium. So if you look at the left atrium, if you can look back there, you'll see a couple things. Notice that there's, in the pulmonary veins, which connect to that left atrium, there's gonna be two openings there, because it's really kind of two pulmonary veins from one side, and then you'll see back in there, right in there, you see the, the other two openings for the pulmonary veins on the right side. And so if we look over here, these two blood vessels right there that are in red, those are the pulmonary veins, and they're gonna go behind the heart. We can kind of see that a little bit back here. They go behind the heart and they connect to that um, left atrium right back there. So blood's gonna come from the lungs for both of those sides, enter into the left atrium, and then that blood's gonna pass through the bicuspid or mitral valve into the left ventricle. And the left ventricle, of course, if you look around it, you see that the muscle is a lot thicker here. That's because this blood has to be pumped really far. It's gotta pump all the way up to your head, all the way down to your feet. Um, and so it has to have a thicker muscle here than it does on the right side. So this part's gonna contract and it's gonna pump the blood up through the aortic valve, the aortic semilunar valve, which looks very much like the pulmonary semilunar valve. And that blood's gonna pass up through here into the aorta. And of course, some of that blood is gonna go through the right coronary artery. Some of it's gonna come out the left coronary artery to feed um, oxygen to this part of the heart right in here, all the muscle. And the rest of that blood's gonna either pass through um, these branches up here or through the descending aorta, which is gonna take the blood behind the heart and down into the rest of the body. So that's gonna be the main structures of our heart right here. And so now let's jump over to the other model and take a look at the kind of the full circulation throughout the body of the blood. All right, so the cool thing about this model that shows all of the branching blood vessels is we can see all of the parts of the body that the blood is gonna flow through. Here we have the heart, of course, and like we had on the other model, we've got the coronary arteries, we've got the right coronary artery, the left coronary artery, which are gonna wrap around the heart. So let's get a little bit closer view of the heart. Here we have the right atrium. The blood's gonna pass through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it's gonna get pumped up through the pulmonary semilunar valve into the pulmonary artery. And that pulmonary artery is gonna go into the lungs. And of course, that pulmonary artery is gonna branch a bunch of times to deliver blood all throughout the lungs. Those branches are gonna get smaller and smaller. We can only see a few branches coming off, but they really branch even more. And those are gonna to connect to the alveoli. The alveoli is whenever we breathe air in through the trachea, which we see up in here. That air is gonna pass through the bronchi and the bronchioles, um, which we don't see in this diagram, over to the alveoli, which are these little air sacs that these blood vessels connect to. So the pulmonary artery branches are gonna to connect to the alveoli. They're gonna pick up oxygen and, and they'll deliver carbon dioxide so we can breathe it out. And then that blood will pass back to the heart through these pulmonary vein branches, which are gonna converge on each other. So blood's gonna flow this way It'll, it'll keep converging together till it gets to these two big pulmonary veins right here, which are gonna to connect to the left atrium. Now, of course, all of that is happening also on the other lung, um, and that blood get pumped to the right lung, and of course, it's gonna come back through the pulmonary veins on that side to the left atrium. The blood's gonna pass through the mitral or bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. Left ventricle, it's gonna get pumped. We can't see it very well in this model, but it's gonna get pumped through the aorta, of course, some of that blood will go through the coronary arteries. And then the rest of the blood is gonna travel um, to a couple different places here. So let me pull back out a little bit. And so we've got three branches that come out of the heart. One of those is gonna take blood up to the, to the brain uh, around the skull. And then there's gonna be parts where these blood vessels go into the brain to deliver oxygen to the brain, to the facial muscles and everything. There's another branch right here, which is gonna take blood down kind of the shoulder and those branches coming off of it down into the arms and everything which we see over here and that's going to take blood of course all the way down into the hands on the other side it's a little bit different we have one branch that's going to come off right here that's called the brachiocephalic brachio for the arm and cephalic for the brain and that blood's going to travel down that way so that one actually it's sort of one branch that branches off, and that's on the right side. On the left side, it's actually two separate branches already, um, one for the arm and then one for the head. So the blood will travel all throughout that area. We can see some other places where there's lots of blood vessels, like the thyroid gland right there as well. Now, all of the blood that doesn't go through these three branches up top or the coronary arteries is going to pass behind the heart here, and it's going to take it down beneath the diaphragm. So let me pull the model down this way a little bit. Here is the descending aorta. 
and you see lots of branches off the descending aorta. Of course, there's going to be some that are going to connect to different things, like here's one that's going to connect to the liver so the blood can get there. We've got the renal artery. It's a little bit hard to see. We can see the renal vein right there. The renal artery is somewhere in there that's going to bring the blood to the kidneys, which we see right there. Of course, there'll be a, an artery that's going to bring blood to the spleen over here. There's going to be arteries that bring blood to the intestines. We see part of the, the large intestine there and there. Of course, whenever we eat food, that food's going to travel through the intestines, which aren't pictured here, but um, that blood needs to make it to the intestines because all that food that we eat has to make it into our bloodstream so it can get around to all of our cells and everything. So we've got to have blood vessels that connect to all those intestines and everything as well. Here, the descending aorta is going to split into two halves, the right iliac and the left iliac, which are the main two branches. And of course, those will branch off even more. We've got some arteries right here, which will branch off and go to kind of the pelvic organs, the reproductive organs and everything. And we've got other branches that will take the blood down to the legs. Um, so lots of blood vessels that travel down, um, down the legs. And of course, all this blood is going to travel back to the heart through the veins. And so we have all these veins in the leg as well. They're going to pass back up and take blood up to the heart. And it's going to make it to the heart by all of these um, branches of veins that are going to come together. They'll converge together into the inferior vena cava, connect back up to the heart into the right atrium. So hopefully this was helpful in you learning a little bit more of the anatomy or the three-dimensional kind of orientation of structures in the heart, as well as giving you a better understanding and view of circulation of blood throughout the body.